The Mormon Doctrine of Salvation According to the LDS Church, one of the most erroneous doctrines originated by Satan and propounded by man is that man is saved alone by the grace of God. That is to say, the doctrine that they reject is that teaching that says all that man needs is to do is simply have faith, believe in Jesus Christ alone. That's all that is necessary for salvation. For salvation alone by the grace of God alone is in Christ alone. But the Mormon church says, no, that's a lie of Satan. You find this in The Miracles of Forgiveness by Spencer W. Kimball, page 206. The Mormon church holds to the doctrine that a plan of salvation was needed for the people of earth. So Jesus offered a plan to the Father and so did Satan offer a plan to the Father also. You must remember these are spirit brothers and they have the same Father. Satan's plan was rejected, but Jesus' plan was accepted. In effect, the devil really wanted to be the savior of all mankind and to deny men their agency and to dethrone God. This is taught in Mormon Doctrine, page 193, and Journals of Discourses, volume 6, page 8. Jesus' sacrifice was not able to cleanse from all our sins. Of course, murder and repeated adultery are exceptions. However, though, we see this in the Journal of Discourses, volume 3, page 247. According to the Articles of Faith, James Talmadge, taught that good works are necessary for salvation. Articles of Faith, page 92. Therefore, there can be no salvation without accepting Joseph Smith as a prophet of God. Doctrine of Salvation, Volume 1, page 188. Talmadge himself wrote that the first effect of the atonement is to secure to all mankind alike exemption from the penalty of the fall. So they're not guilty of Adam's fall. Thus, that's providing a part of the plan for general salvation. But the second effect, he says, was to open a way for individual salvation whereby mankind may secure remission of personal sins. Articles of Faith, page 78-79. through 79. Talmadge maintained that these sins are the result of individual acts. It is just that forgiveness for them should be conditioned on individual compliance with prescribed requirements. Obedience, if you will, to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. The gospel as proclaimed by the Mormon church. Articles of Faith, page 79. It is this grace, it is an enabling power that allows men and women to lay hold on eternal life an exaltation after they have expended their own best efforts. The LDS Bible Dictionary, page 697. According to 2 Nephi 2523, we read, We know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. Further, the Mormon Church teaches that the purpose of atonement was to bring resurrection and immortality to all people, regardless of whether they receive Christ by faith. Christ's atonement is only a partial basis for worthiness and eternal life, which also requires obedience to all the commands of the Mormon church, including Mormon temple rituals, Gospel Principles, page 74-75, through 75, and the Mormon Doctrine, page 669. The prophet Joseph Smith taught, and I quote, Therefore ye are justified of faith and works through grace. That is seen as a interpretation of Romans 14, excuse me, Romans 4, 16. The Book of Mormon teaches this, and I quote, it is from 2 Nephi 25:3. For we labor diligently to write, to persuade our children, and also our brethren to believe in Christ and to be reconciled to God. For we know that it is by grace we are saved after all we can do. The Book of Mormon also states. All that we could do was to what? Repent of our sins. Alma 24, 11. The prophet named Lehi, as told in the Book of Mormon, taught that, quote, There is no flesh that can dwell in the presence of God, save it be through the merits and mercy and the grace 
of the Holy Messiah. 2 Nephi 2.8 According to gospel principles, the Mormons accept Christ's atonement by repenting of our sins, being baptized, receiving the gift, they say, of the Holy Spirit, and obeying all of the commandments, gospel principles, corporation of the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, page 68. According to the historic Orthodox Christian Church, it is believed that the purpose of the atoning work of Christ on the cross was to provide the complete solution for man's sin problem. However, those who reject God's grace in this life will have no part in salvation, but are under the judgment of God for eternity. Listen to what Christ says in John 3, 36. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Again, Hebrews 9, 27, As is appointed unto men once to die, after that, what? Judgment. The righteous unto everlasting life, the wicked unto eternal condemnation. 1 John 5, 11 through 12. And this is the testimony that God has given to us, eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. There is no teaching that there is a means of a works righteousness by which man can make himself acceptable to God. Historic Christianity clearly ties sanctification to its justification. Justification is a forensic act of God wherein He declares legally that we are pardoned from our sin and we are adopted into His family. But the result of that regenerating work in the Spirit in us whereby we can have faith also brings other graces to us, including sanctification. so that good fruits will manifest themselves. The good works show that we have truly been redeemed. We have been transformed through the power of Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit. But it is not grace plus works. It is grace plus nothing minus nothing in justification. Yes, he who truly is justified will walk and seek to walk in sanctification. He will produce good works. That's the historic Orthodox teaching concerning salvation. Once again, we see what? The Mormon church does not hold to the essential teaching of the historic church. Not at all. It should be no surprise then to us once again that the two churches absolutely reject each other's doctrines. They are antithetical to one another. The Mormon church rejects the whole historic church as being no church at all. And the historic church rejects Mormonism as nothing more than a cult. The word cult there, not as we think in modern day times like Jim Jones. A cult meaning a sect that is a formed, departed from. In that way they're a cult. But even in that way, I really don't think they're a cult as much as they are really a new religion that began in the 1820s with Joseph Smith. But clearly Christianity and Mormonism do not teach the same essential doctrines of Christianity according to the Word of God as it has been maintained in the historical Orthodox Church.